Hello everyone, welcome back to ovesen.net and today I am taking a look at this uh, what might possibly be the world's most yellowed uh, Commodore 128. As you can see the machine looks uh, horrible. Uh, it probably should look like uh, this monitor here, same color as that. Uh, however, this is what can happen to these old machines over time. Strange thing is that only a few keys uh, are yellowed. Otherwise, the machine is in good condition. There's no uh, damages uh, on the outside. Um, screws are there. I did test it briefly when I received the machine and it did not work. Uh, however, I'm gonna connect uh, to my TV now and uh, just check one more time if it's uh, working or not. Nope, it's dead and there's no uh, power LED. So that's uh, expected, so just uh, let me go ahead and start doing the usual program with these old machines. And as you can see, the, the underside is not that yellowed, so this is more like the original color of the machine. My plan for this video is to uh, figure out what's wrong with the machine and uh, of course fix it if I can. Uh, the other part of the video is uh, as usual to clean it up and make it uh, look like a brand new machine. Okay, this has uh, some uh, hooks around here, so uh, be careful when you uh, open this that you don't break them. You just pry out like this, I think. Yeah, you see here. I think the Commodore uh, 128 is a great machine. It has uh, three modes and uh, it's the 128 mode and the 64 mode and then it can run CPM at, at, with this Z80 CPU. You open this machine uh, from the back because uh, here's uh, a ground connection that needs to be uh, re removed before you can uh, Remove the keyboard. So what do we have here? <laughs> I don't think this machine ever has been opened because um, I could feel the screws uh, holding the case was quite tight and uh, doesn't seem to be uh, opened. And however, here's a few things to note. Rust. That's uh, enemy number one on these machines, I think. Of course, a lot of dust and uh, there's some corrosion all over the, the shield here, so. There's a few screws around the, the whole uh, shield. Then you have these uh, twist locks that you need to uh, to twist back to get through uh, the slide. All right. I'm gonna remove uh, the board and give it a good clean um, alongside with the case, which I'm gonna clean too. It's always best to do the cleaning before you do any uh, electronics. Of course I'm gonna do a full clean of the keyboard so um, I need to remove that also in order to be able to clean the case. I just spray it with this uh, window cleaner Universal. And, uh, that seems to take away all the the fat and the shit. Then I just leave it to soak in uh, soapy water, uh, hot water with uh, with the dishwasher soap. 
for half an hour. On to the keyboard and uh, this one looks a bit grim. Look at this uh, shit. Oh my god. I'm gonna remove all the keycaps and clean them and clean uh, the keyboard itself and uh, yeah. And then some retro brighting of these keycaps. I vacuumed the keyboard and uh, that got rid of most of the dust. Now I'm gonna remove all the keycaps with this uh, small keycap. Uh, Cooler. This uh, spacebar is a bit uh, tricky, but if you remove the the keycap first, then it's easier to to see how you should uh, remove uh, this metal bar because um, it's easy to break off the plastics that uh, that holds this. Uh, stabilizing uh, bar or rod so this one should be pushed uh, in this direction against the keycaps and then there's uh, three springs on the space key it's uh, one uh, regular one and two smaller ones so you keep the smaller ones separate <laughs> Alright, that was all the keycaps and uh, yeah, you actually uh, need a tool like this if you're gonna take off uh, lots of keycaps. It's very hard without and also you risk breaking off uh, the uh, yeah parts of the keycaps and uh, the mechanism here. If you, if you try to use a screwdriver to, to bend them out, uh, you might risk damaging them. The springs I have put in uh, some strong vinegar and uh, as you can see there are some corrosion of some of the springs and the vinegar is actually working uh, already. You see all the bubbles uh, coming up. The keyboard plate looks a lot better now I just uh, clean it with some uh, isopropanol. And then I just use the cotton swabs to to go over the remaining dirt. The metal uh, for the keyboard plate actually has a little bit of rust uh, on the edges and I, I use a little bit of rust remover on the uh, q-tips just to to try and remove it. I think it's just the surface uh, rust. Time to take a look at the motherboard and uh, I start by removing the back uh, shield and uh, it also has these uh, tabs you have to twist. The board doesn't look too bad. Uh, there's a little bit of mess here, looks like a little bit of corrosion and uh, there's a few bodge wires, in, even uh, one with a resistor. <laughs> I guess those are uh, from the factory. I'm gonna take this out into my garage and then blow it with some uh, compressed air. I cleaned up the board and uh, I'm starting to inspect uh, how it looks and um, I immediately see a couple of places where there is corrosion like here I zoomed in a bit and as you can see there's um, corrosion here doesn't look uh, very good uh, and uh, also on the back side I found a 
couple of places. Here's a few spots with the green corrosion. Here too and uh, yeah there's a few places, a few spots like that. Nothing major so this seems to be uh, be possible to clean up and um, might not be the reason for this board not starting. Anyway, I'll uh, start by uh, cleaning up the board with, uh, with isopropanol and uh, getting off all the dirt and all the heat paste like this. And, uh... and of course the front side needs a good uh, cleaning with alcohol too. So. I'll do the whole board. That was cleaning the board and I'm also gonna spray some, uh, some electronic uh, cleaner into all the contacts and uh, switches. all these stickers that fell off uh, I don't know if I want to keep them they says uh, they just say what kind of um, of EEPROM uh, which it is and it says uh, C128 character Norwegian C128 64 uh, Norwegian and this one says Norwegian kernel C128. Since these originally cover the window for the EEPROMs, I replaced them with uh, some uh, black tape instead. All right, time to do some uh, retro brighting of uh, the keycaps, and uh, they all cleaned up nicely. And as you can see, very yellowed some of the keycaps. And I'm gonna use my uh, method with uh, using uh, hydrogen peroxide cream, 12%. Uh, this is like a hair saloon cream. And I put the keycaps into um, vacuum bags uh, meant for food preserving. Then I add a good amount of cream into the bag. maybe a half a deciliter and I just uh, massage uh, the cream around uh, so that it covers uh, all uh, the keycaps then I uh, distribute the, all the keycaps into the bag so that they are a little bit separated and finally I just uh, use my vacuum machine to draw out all the air. So now it's uh, tightly sealed and uh, ready for uh, some uh, warm bath. I try using this water which is uh, a little uh, less than uh, 50 degrees you can barely touch it with the fingers uh, i usually use my sous vide machine to keep a constant temperature but uh, because i'm working uh, at home uh, in my kitchen i don't want that noise right now so i'll keep this water heated for a couple of hours and uh, turn the bags around from time to time the case I have put outside in the sun and uh, as you can see we have still some snow here in the uh, middle of May. Now I'm ready to start testing the board and see if there's um, any life in it. So I'll start by just uh, measuring some uh, voltages uh, across the board and see if I can, can find any obvious problems. 
before I turn the bo board uh, on, I just push some of the chips and actually some of them was fairly high. They actually come out a bit. So um, you never know, these old boards might start working just by cleaning and uh, pushing uh, the chips. Nope, still a black screen. First thing I'm measuring is uh, this uh, regulator here. It has uh, 20 volts uh, on one pin and uh, the other pin has 12.4 uh, volts. And then I measure, um, uh, I measure on the cassette port. This pin here should have 5 volts, uh, which it has it's not uh, that high actually it's only 4.8 then I measure the connector for the LED the power LED and it's actually 4.8 volts too so uh, that's strange because the LED was not uh, lit when I tested the machine so let me just um, insert it now yeah, it actually lights up. That's an uh, improvement from when I tested it before. It was completely dark. I also checked that uh, the chips are warm and uh, yeah, they actually are. These one are noticeably warm. That one too. So at first glance, this board uh, looks to be uh, alive. Um, I can tell that uh, there is voltage across the board and uh, chips are getting uh, warm so uh, things are alive so what i'm thinking now is uh, i'm gonna pull out the, all uh, the socketed chips and uh, clean the sockets and then put them back again so i'm just using a flat screwdriver first to loosen it a bit and uh, on both sides and then I can use my uh, puller, gently lift it up. Then some electronic cleaner just to clean up all the sockets. Use a cotton swab just to see if I can uh, get a little bit uh, dirt off the contacts, maybe the toothbrush also. I also clean the legs a little bit with uh, cotton swab with some um, isopropanol. Then I just clean a little bit around and inside the socket before I put the chip back into place. So this one says uh, 0287, which means it was produced in the uh, uh, second week of uh, 87. That was all the chips and uh, their sockets cleaned and uh, just a quick test again. Nah, still black screen. One thing I was thinking about, uh, this machine boots up as uh, Commodore 128 and it actually has an 80 column mode that doesn't work on uh, on my TV I think so I'm connecting the keyboard and then um, I think this is the key for uh, switching between 40 and 80 column mode uh, also now I could uh, boot it into Commodore 64 mode by holding the Commodore key So this might not be the easy fix I was hoping to, so uh, I need to investigate some more. I think I'll uh, try and concentrate now on the corrosion on the board. I finished with the keycaps and uh, I think they look okay. Uh, there are still a few keys and those are the ones that were uh, noticeably yellower than the other ones, like this one. So. I'm gonna take a second round of uh, the few keys that are worse. So I tried to tune in to the analog uh, RF signal and uh, as you can see the 
the TV actually finds a signal that means that the, the RF modulator has uh, power at least and generates a RF signal. So now the most yellowed keys has been given a little extra sunshine and uh, I think they look okay. This is another Commodore 128 that I have and uh, it's partially working uh, as you can see it uh, displays uh, the start screen and uh, something's wrong with the character colors. This one I'll probably take a look at in another episode later. But uh, my thought was to uh, initially try to swap over a few of the of the socketed uh, chips here and I already did that. So I moved all the socketed uh, chips uh, one by one over to uh, the other board but uh, it still did not uh, uh, boot so uh, I think there's uh, something more sinister uh, wrong. So obviously there's nothing wrong with uh, those chips, uh, probably. However, with this uh, working board, I'm gonna do some measurements and uh, compare uh, with uh, the other board. All right, I have uh, done a lot of probing and testing and um, all kinds of different places on this board and everything turns out to be okay I uh, compared to the working board and uh, uh, everything I measured so far is uh, okay voltages too they are 4.9 on the 5 volts and uh, yeah 12 volts okay too so uh, I don't know uh, what this could be um, so my next plan is to um, to actually replace the CPU because uh, I have uh, did some research and uh, black screen on the Commodore 128 is uh, often because of the CPU is uh, dead. Because I don't have an oscilloscope uh, I can't really measure the activities on the data bus or uh, anything like that. Uh, Time to desolder a couple of uh, chips. And uh, when I'm uh, at it, I'm gonna take uh, two of the chips, uh, the Z80 and the 8502. So the soldering went uh, very well. Uh, now I'm gonna just clean up the solder pads with a little bit of solder wick. After the soldering uh, the chips I noticed something, a broken trace and it's right here. And uh, this small trace runs from uh, this pin over here uh, to this pin over here. So this should be uh, connected which they are not. This probably happened uh, when I desoldered or when I cleaned up the pads but uh, I'm not sure. Anyway I have to fix that some way. Okay so that's there's the little uh, trace that uh, supposed to connect to this one and uh, of course now it's uh, broken so I have to um, bridge the connection in some way and I think maybe the best way is to just solder a small wire from this uh, uh, hole here. So I'm gonna cut the, cut the trace here. These are really thin and uh, small trace and then cut here just to make sure it doesn't bridge against the neighboring um, solder pad. Time to put in the sockets. Now I'm gonna solder in those two sockets. And first I use a little bit of flux on uh, the solder points. That was the sockets soldering. Just clean up the mess. 
then I'm gonna solder in this uh, small wire uh, to repair the broken trace and it is from uh, uh, pin 4 on this uh, row here one two three four And then it's over to uh, pin number two on this uh, row on the other CPU. So I'm just gonna cut it to length here, a little bit longer to have some slack. All right, I think that's it. That's a lot better. Now we can uh, insert the chips again. And now there should be a connection between uh, this pin number four, which uh, is here, and number two on this one. And there's nothing. Did I do it wrong? Oh man, of course I did it the wrong way. I turned the board upside down and then it. <laughs> I soldered the wire on the opposite uh, end. Stupid. So there's the wire. It should be uh, <laughs> from from this point uh, to this point instead. Well, you learn from uh, your mistakes, don't you? <laughs> now let's do the right pins. No, it's correct. Hopefully. Yeah, there's connectivity and I did not short uh, between uh, some of the other pins as well, so that's uh, good. So now I can insert the uh, CPU 8502. Changing the 8502 and set 80 CPUs did not uh, help, so uh, uh, I have to continue on my list of uh, things that can uh, cause uh, black screen and uh, uh, next thing is to look at the U7. Uh, no, actually U7 is uh, this one. This is the memory management unit and uh, I already uh, tried replacing that one. Uh, this is a U11. So I'm gonna desolder this and replace it with another one from uh, another board. Then I'm gonna solder in the replacement chip. Uh, however, I don't have sockets that are this long, so I'm gonna solder in in place. Nope, still not working. Time to assemble the keyboard. And uh, all the keycaps look uh, fantastic. Final key, space key. This is the most uh, exciting part of uh, this restoration. Yes! <laughs> Look at this keyboard. Shiny and nice. Looks like brand new actually. And if you compare it to uh, when I started, uh, here you can see the difference. All right, these are starting to look uh, much better now. So I have swapped out a lot of chips, that didn't help. And, uh, and I looked a little bit uh, more detailed on the board itself. And I have found one issue here, and that is here. There seemed to be uh, some corrosion and uh, I'll zoom in a bit. And it looks like uh, this, this trace here is actually cut by uh, uh, some corrosion here. So if I try to measure the continuity, it uh, seems to be, uh, yeah, it seems to be cut trace. 
Oh, if I touch there, I get the continuity, but uh, not further on to this uh, wire here. So I'm gonna scrape this off and then try to uh, to make a small uh, bodge wire between uh, the two points. Then I use a little bit of white uh, vinegar to uh, clean up. I'll let the uh, vinegar work for a couple of minutes. Then I use a little bit of alcohol to clean it up. So now we can clearly see that the trace is cut there. So uh, a small uh, connection bridging those two points, maybe that's the solution. Then I'll try to solder it. It's very small, but... Uh, All right, I think that's uh, good enough. Then I measure if I have a connection from this uh, this bridge over to the other side of the wire. Yeah, that's a good one. Time to test. Was this the fix? Exciting. Nope, still black screen. I have started to desolder the whole uh, RF modulator because I don't think I can manage to uh, replace any components inside the the modulator itself but uh, I have a spare and I can test it at least to desolder the RF modulator you desolder these four pins here and these four and then these four big blobs and they are really really hard to get off I can imagine so <laughs> So that's one loose um, RF modulator uh, with a little bit of struggling. <laughs> then I do a little bit of cleanup underneath the RF modulator. Then I have this replacement modulator. It uh, is from another Commodore uh, 128D. Time to test. Turning on one, two, three. No, still black screen. <laughs>